Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do the ruffle skirt video. I put a poll on my um, page. I did a poll on my page to see what you guys wanted to do next. Um, a ruffle skirt or an updated peasant top slash dress. And um, it was only two votes <laughs> but the votes won and it was for the ruffle skirt. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, got my coldest water bottle here guys if you are interested I love this thing and it's helping me out so much through all of this health stuff that I'm going through is having my cold water and not have to worry about running up and down the stairs to get more on um, this thing last I tested it out 24 to 48 hours it um, holds up cold in the sun I left it in my car for a doctor's appointment one time I was in there for over an hour and a half when I came out the bottle was hot to the touch but the water inside was still ice cold so I totally believe in it the link is below if you would like to purchase one also there is a giveaway and that link is also below in the description so we are going to get started with the ruffle skirt but before we get into that if you are not subscribed to this channel make sure you go ahead and subscribe also make sure to give me a big old thumbs up if you like this video if you would like to follow me on social media all of that is linked down below in the description as well and make sure you have your bell notifications turned on so you get notified every time I upload a video. So let's get into it. So what I have here is four different strips of uh, rectangles. So the first one, the large one, is the main part of the skirt. Now I measured that to my daughter's waist. She has a 23 inch waist. Actually it's probably a 22 but I went to 23 and I doubled that and that's how I got the first rectangle and I measured that. Uh, so 23 and 23 is 46 and I so it's 46 by 10 inches and then I have three different strips of for the ruffles so I measured those by three inches and triple the measurement of the waist so wherever your waist of, of measurement is I would add one inch just to be safe for the larger part of the skirt which is the rectangle you can cut it in half or you can do like I'm doing and use one piece um, and then for the strips you want to triple the length of the strips so if the waist like I said is 23 then you're going to triple that and that should be the size of your strips now all fabric doesn't come in those lengths so as you can see I have my pin here to add the extra length I just cut some more strip and cut that um, down to what I needed it to be to make it triple the length of the waist so what we're going to do first is finish off the raw edges because this is a fabric that does fray and then we're going to ruffle the the strips and I will show you how to do that I cannot find my ruffler foot or my gathering foot so we're going to do this uh, freehand well not freehand but we're going to do it using our sewing machine so I want to show you my sewing machine came with this foot this is an uh, I believe this is the overcasting foot um, and then I do have I don't have my book up here so I can't remember the names of all of these but I have two different feet that I use this is a because this is like a rolled hem foot that's what that one is and this is the overcasting foot which works great if you don't have a ruffler foot or a um, a gathering foot this will work to help you finish off your edges I do have a serger which is downstairs which will make this so much easier but um, as you all know I'm dealing with issues with my health so I am in my room office right now so I'm going to use this overcasting foot and I will show you how to put it on and how to use it so you're going to take off the foot that you have on already I have little pockets for my feet in my sewing machine and so you're just going to take it and it snaps right on to you should be able to, there you go snaps right on so for this you are going to use a zigzag stitch to do this um, and I like to make my width about three when I'm doing this um, just so it doesn't break my needle but the first thing you want to do is um, sew the two pieces together for the strips and you could just do that with a straight stitch so um, I'm going to show you how this overcasting foot works 
So there's a black part right here on the side of it. I'm not sure if you can see it, but you line your fabric up to that. <clears throat> and there's like two lines that are in the middle of the foot. And when you do the zigzag stitch, I have mine set to three and a half and the length is set to two. Actually it's set to one and a half. So it will essentially take the fabric and roll it under a little bit and it gives it the finished look. So let me show you what that looks like. So as you can see here, I finished off the top and the bottom of two of the stripes, not um, all three. And I forgot to tell you, the uh, one of the strips I did was actually four inches long, and that's this one. And the other two are three inches long. So in order to do the ruffler with your sewing machine like I said my ruffler foot is downstairs I can't find my gathering foot so I'm just going to use my sewing machine my tension wheel is actually up here so I'm actually going to set my tension to seven like seven and a half because I still want my ruffles to be kind of loose seven and a half and then you're going to do the longest length so mine is actually four and I'm going to take this down to two and a half for the width so that's how you get your ruffles um, they say the tightest tension my tension goes to nine I only want seven and a half for my tension you could play around with yours I say play around with a scrap piece of paper I mean a scrap piece of fabric first to see how wide or how loose you want your ruffles and um, for this you can go ahead and just use a straight stitch which is what I'm going to use so let's get into that now you're only ruffling the strips you're not ruffling the main part of the fabric because that will uh, gather together once you put the elastic in always back stitch secures your stitch So as you can see it's ruffling up pretty nicely already so I'm just going to finish this and then we'll get to pinning it to the skirt. Okay so now that we have all of our ruffles done I'm going to put the first layer on, sew it and then show you how to do the other two because the, the bottom layer that I'm doing for this skirt um, is going to go on differently than the other two pieces and I'll show you what I mean. So for this one, I'm going to take, this is, as you can see, the fabric is on the right side. So what I'm going to do is flip this up on the wrong side and just start pinning it down. And then when I flip this down after I sew it, it will look like this and then the other two layers will go above it. Okay, so we have this pin now, so we're just going to take this and do a straight stitch and then we'll put the other two layers on. Okay, so this is our first layer. So what we're going to do now is just to place these two ruffled layers on top of the skirt. So you just find where you want to line your, um, your other two layers up and then you just pin. So I want this one to be slightly above here so all the way across I'm going to pin this above this layer just like that then I'm gonna put the next layer on top of that one like so so the third layer will go above that one just like that and then we'll do a straight stitch all the way across on both of these and then we'll finish up 
Yes, yeah, so this is what it looks like with the three layers of ruffles on it. So now what you want to do is sew the sides together. So you're just going to pin it and sew it straight stitch. You want to match the ruffles up so that when you sew the stitch down the side that you're sewing the ruffles as well. And you may have to push them in just a little bit. But you're going to pin them and straight stitch or zigzag stitch, it doesn't matter. And once we've done this, then we can go to the waistband and the elastic. So we are about to sew the side seam of the skirt. I matched up the ruffles. Um, that may take a little bit of time for you to pin that, but you want to match up the ruffles because when you sew, if you don't, then they'll be on the inside of the seam instead of, I mean on the outside of the seam instead of the inside. Always back stitch. And I'm doing about a quarter inch seam. So when you get down to sewing the ruffle, instead of going straight down, you want to kind of go out diagonally just a little bit. Follow the curve of the ruffles. don't line them up you won't have that nice seam like that the ruffle will actually be on the outside so right now the skirt looks like a long piece of fabric once you put the elastic in the waistband then it'll ruch together and you'll have your skirt so now we're about to work with the elastic so this like I said is the size of my daughter's waist plus one inch so you're just gonna kind of overlap it a little bit like this and then do a zigzag stitch. I like to go over it several times and then do a straight stitch also. That's just me, you don't have to. One little tip though guys, zigzag stitch when you're working with elastic helps to keep the stretch. When you do the straight stitch, you kind of keep it makes it a little bit more firm. But if you're doing the zigzag, it will stretch along with the fabric or elastic, whatever you're using that stretch. I'm gonna back stitch and then go over it one more time. So what we're going to do now is put the elastic into our skirt. So I always like to match the seam of the elastic with the seam of the back part of the skirt. So I'm just going to pin that right there. Okay, and do the same with the front. So I'm going to flatten this a little bit. And then take the front part and pin it. And don't worry, we're going to roll this over. This is just the first step of the process. And you want to do the same thing with the sides. So when you're sewing, you are going to stretch the elastic. That's how it's going to fit around this waistband just by stretching the elastic while you sew. You're not going to pull on the actual fabric. You're just going to pull on the elastic. That part can be very, very tricky. So let's get into it and I'll show you how to do that. This is 
the first to the last part of the process. So I'm going to top stitch this. Basically what a top stitch is, is you sewing on top of the fabric as opposed to the wrong side of the fabric. So like I said, this part can be a little bit tricky. So what I like to do is start off with putting the needle in to the elastic in the fabric because that helps out a lot. Start a little bit of sewing. Backstitch. Okay, so now we're going to get into pulling. So basically, you're going to hold this, this side down as best you can. Make sure the fabric is covering the elastic. And when you sew, you're going to pull and hold at the same time. Like I said, this is very, very tricky. So take your time. sure when you're pulling that it's going to stretch out to the length of the fabric. So now we have the main part of the waistband in. So what you're going to do, you can leave it like this if you like. Or you can do like I'm going to do and turn this in. Now it looks a little ruched now, but you're still going to pull on this as you sew. And then it will straighten that fabric out. And I'm going to turn this inside out to do this process. Always backstitch. So here comes the tricky part. And as you can see, it's straightening out, but you want to make sure it doesn't buckle. So pull it as tight as you can up, and then when you're sewing, you pull it out. And you're going to do this until you're finished with the waistband. Okay guys, so we are coming around to the end. Make sure to back stitch. So during this part, I like to cut out all of the hanging threads. Um, so you can do that and I'll show you what it looks like. So here's our ruffled skirt. I hope you like this tutorial. If you have any questions about the, the ruffles or the main part of the skirt, um, go ahead and ask. I use more of a slipperier fabric. Um, this was more like a polyester fabric that I used. Normally what I would use when I'm making skirts like this would be like knit or cotton, but it works for any type of fabric that you're going to do. If you have questions about the settings again for the ruffles, please let me know. Um, I do recommend though purchasing a ruffler foot or a gathering foot because it would make your life so much easier. Like I said, I just didn't have um, the time to go downstairs and get my ruffler foot and I have to buy a new gathering foot because I lost mine. So um, that's why I did it using the settings on my sewing machine. So um, if you like this video guys, make sure to give me a big old thumbs up. If you are not subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and subscribe. Also, if you would like to follow my vlog channel that is linked down in the description, please turn your bell notifications on so you get notified every time I upload a video. And if you'd like to follow me on social media, that is all linked in the, in the description as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!